research and discovery. Futurists. When you're a cancer patient and you're told that something might help, you're willing to do almost anything. We know that regular exercise can uh, offer protection against type 2 diabetes. Get on it, get on it, get on it, get on it. Ischemic heart disease, some cancers, dementia, and maybe even um, depression. Hopefully after two years program, the test results will show that it does have a dampening effect on the uh, development of, the, of my cancer. A retired farmer in his 60s, Evold was diagnosed with prostate cancer five years ago and is having treatment. He's also the subject of an unusual experiment in Denmark's biggest hospital. He's been told to exercise frequently at home. Once every six months, doctors check his body fat and other health data. Even though in my long life, I haven't done any regular sports or regular exercises, I'm sure I'll continue to do it after the program, and that's a fringe benefit. And then it wouldn't hurt if I lost a few kilos during the program also. That would be a nice fringe benefit. Doctors here think regular exercise can help to prevent and treat different diseases. To know why and how, they joined a European Union research project called Exgenesis. After hundreds of tests with both sick and healthy volunteers, researchers now say they've some new scientific evidence. We know that when you exercise, when the muscles just contract, then it will activate a lot of genes, and that if you don't exercise, then you will not activate these genes. We also know that when you exercise, then the muscle will release substances into the blood where it can influence the brain, uh, fat, uh, the liver, and maybe the cancer. UK molecular biologist Graeme Hardy coordinated the project. He visits Copenhagen regularly to discuss with his partners the secrets of one of these newly identified substances. This is a, a, a model of the part of the structure of the protein present in muscle and indeed in other tissues which we believe is, is very important in the signaling process that occur during exercise. So uh, when exercise happens this protein is switched on and uh, it, it in turn switches on many downstream processes. Many of the metabolic changes that occur in muscle during exercise we believe are mediated by this protein. Molecular pathways are a daily routine for Alan Vag. Three days a week, he cycles to his laboratory in Copenhagen, where he studies the relationship between physical inactivity and type 2 diabetes. Those people who have the highest risk of type 2 diabetes are people like taxi drivers, like truck drivers, who are actually sitting very still or almost physically inactive during uh, uh, the majority uh, of, of, of their, t uh, uh, their wake time uh, of the day. To better understand the reasons, Alan asked several healthy volunteers to lie in bed for nine days. Then they were asked to cycle at least 30 minutes a day for several weeks. His conclusions? The longer the physical inactivity, the more vulnerable the human body becomes to diseases like type 2 diabetes. If you go from a normal daily life, physical activity, down to complete bed rest for nine days, you see quantitatively major effects on glucose metabolism, fat metabolism, gene functions and other in vivo functions like, like uh, glucose production in the liver, insulin secretion from the pancreas. Complementary genetical studies were made at these research facilities in southern Sweden. Led by Finnish endocrinologist Leif Group, 
Researchers here helped to identify around 20 novel genes predisposed to type 2 diabetes. They also learned how some of these genes are influenced through regular exercise. Now they want to move forward. We would like to identify individuals who would benefit more from exercise. Are there ways you could influence, I mean, genes that they would make you more, I mean, susceptible or gain more from exercise? The final aim of this complex genetical and molecular research effort is of course to provide new, better treatments against either cancer or type 2 diabetes, but it's also about learning how to prevent these diseases. Very soon 10% of the population in Europe will have diabetes. Most countries will not be, cannot really afford to treat all their patients, so we need to find better means to prevent the disease where exercise really is, really is a, a key, but also to use the exercise in the treatment because it's, a, it's cheaper than a lot of the new drugs. A point of view shared by Danish physiologist Fleming Dela. Every day he treats type 2 diabetes patients whose fat and muscle secrets he studies through biopsies. Biological samples don't lie, he says. Daily exercise keeps your body stronger. The more fit you are, the healthier you'll stay and the longer you'll live. That is old news. The challenge is to persuade people to realize that this is the way forward. Change their lifestyle. That is the challenge. It's a challenge faced by Evel Bank, who, after a mostly inactive life, says he has understood the message and he has spread it around. My wife follows, to the best of her ability, follows the program also. We're running our exercise runs in the forest and, and she runs with me. Not always keeping, keeping up, but uh, as best you can. It won't cure cancer, but, but uh, of course, healthy life, lifestyle, and especially exercising, uh, probably does have a good effect. And that's what EU researchers are trying to scientifically assess for the sake of a healthier European society.